Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Media True, and welcome back to Border Gore 2, where if you are of a sensitive disposition, you may wish to look away now. Because, yeah, a couple of parts ago, the Holy Roman Empire basically took over pretty much all of continental Europe. That didn't end well for them, and now as a result of that, Europe's a bit of a mess. Bit of a flipping mess. I mean, things are a bit more sensible this side of Europe. If we just look at, like, Eastern Europe, everything makes a lot of sense. Western Europe right now? Bit messy. Quite messy, in fact. Needs a bit of time to, you know, get itself sorted out. And I'm working on that. Alright, you know, I've got a good alliance going down to potentially secure myself Normandy through uh, just, you know, marriage alliances and succession and whatever. I'm working on getting a claim on Flanders. I've got a guy down here who's going to be able to claim Champagne around here. So, you know, we will slowly piece France back together. That's fine. What I have realised, however, is this might not necessarily be the best time for Europe to be incredibly fragmented and weak and in trouble. Because, um, quick Mongol update. Yeah, the Mongols are on the move again. They're on the move and uh, they have actually fully invaded the Hungarian Eastern Holdings at this point. That definitely used to belong to Hungary. And in fact, aside from this one tiny bit of land here, the Mongols are almost at the Byzantine Empire. I think they've still got about 55,000 strength. Yeah, they've got about 55,000. Now, that's not that terrifying. Okay, if all of Europe stood against them, we could handle it. And I'm assuming we can actually form, like, defensive packs against the Mongols, hopefully. The Byzantines. How are you guys doing? Because sometimes you're not as strong as you... Uh... Actually, you know what? 40,000. That is not bad. The Byzantines can field 40,000 men right now. That's not so terrible. If they actually get drawn up in a good position, if they catch, like, you know, a small part of the Mongol Empire out of position, that's fine because the Mongols have got, you know, lots of trouble to deal with. Plenty of this territory doesn't actually belong to the Mongols. You know, there's still some problems back over here. Not all of the Mongol force can actually be invading one place at once. The Byzantines might actually be able to stop them, which would be very, very nice indeed. But I've got bigger fish to fry, by which I mean smaller fish to fry. But, you know, fish that are closer to me. Those fish are quite far away. In fact, the Mongols aren't really a fish. More of a giant, giant shark that's slowly coming towards us and eating Europe. But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I have got empire building plans here. Look at this. Like, there's no border gore here. No. This is just flipping beautiful. I mean, if I go into detail, there's a bit of border gore, but... It's not that bad. It's mostly fine. I want Scotland. Getting Scotland, however, proving to be a bit on the tricky side. You see, annoyingly few people actually have claims on Scotland. Those that do actually are landed, so they're not moving into my territory. I was thinking, aha, but if they've got adult children, I could just get the adult children, invite them to my court, and then assassinate the actual people, because then the adult children, if they're not actually the heirs, might still pick up a strong claim if they're just in the succession queue, but not actually moving back to Scotland to take over. No, unfortunately, just about all the children of all these people are still kids, and you cannot invite children to your court. They've got to be adults to be invited to the court. So, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. It's very difficult for me to actually get a claim on Scotland right now. I mean, yeah, someone's gone and taken Galloway. I could just do this a bit more of a, yeah, roundabout fashion. Let's just break down Scotland here. What actually belongs to who right now? Because if I was just to basically move in and take, yeah take enough of Scotland, I could just basically say, okay, Kingdom of Scotland is going to belong to me now, yoink, if I just own a large enough share of it. That I could do, yes. Right, day you're me up here a little bit. What do I actually need to own to technically control Scotland? Because right now I've got, yeah, one bit out of 17, and it's going to need to be 51%. So I need to basically hold nine counties of Scotland. Eight wouldn't be enough, it needs to be nine. So, I've got one. Okay, if I were to take over Moray right now, hang on, that is, that's worth four on its own. Okay, that's probably worth grabbing potentially. Oh, there's even fewer bloody claims on that. Bloody hell, where are all the Scottish claimants? And here's something nice, by the way. I'm gonna actually begin today with a, a form alliance request. Okay, 
You are the King of Aragon and... Oh, blimey. Alright, 14,000 troops. Okay. I will take an alliance with 14,000 troops. Let's just make sure you've not got any particularly bad enemies going on here. No, you occasionally go to a war with the non-Catholics in Spain, but for the most part, you seem to be pretty cool. Yes, I gladly accept. Excellent. I'm pretty sure I married into that family some time ago, but they didn't want to actually ally up at the time. But now they do. As for Africa, which seems to have... Ah, which seems to have now separated out from Sicily. I'm guessing you're not so... No. You're not really so uh, useful anymore, unfortunately. I might just dump King Hubert of Africa at some point. That will be... Uh, that'll be fine. Maybe, actually. Yeah, give it a generation or two. Maybe I'll be able to get Italy back on side. Because, uh, well, Italy, hang on. Italy, I'm going to marry the Queen in a proper traditional marriage. Italy is on primogeniture. Okay. We might just be able to quietly bring Italy into the Empire at some point. That'd be very, very welcome indeed. All right, that is all worth keeping an eye on right there. And we also have a very small problem with uh, threat here. You see, I could immediately go to war against you, my good man. I've got a weak claim against you, and you're a child. So I could just basically push this guy's claim, bring this into this lovely new bit of territory I've got. But he technically works for this duke. And this duke is part of the actual defensive pact against me. Even though, weirdly, the people inside the pact all seem, you know, fairly positive about me. They're not keen anyway. So, uh, if I begin this war... Actually, there's not that many of them. There's really not that many of them. And they're not even that strong, to be honest. And uh, I could have Aragon on my side. I could be... Yeah, this could be the first test of the alliance. I mean, I'm technically not breaking a treaty, I'm just triggering a defensive pact. This guy's only got like 3,045 troops. Yeah, you know what? I'd say my actual retinue, combined with just a handful of extra forces, we can just make that happen immediately. That's not even a big deal. Yeah, why not? Screw it, let's get it done. How many troops can you yourself bring, by the way? Only 1,000. Okay, if I was to wait for just a little while... I might be able to do a little bit better there, because you, my good man, yeah, you can actually whip up a fair few troops by yourself if I just let you charge up for a while. Yeah, you know what, okay, we'll hold off for a while, maybe the defensive pact will fade out, this guy could do with just building up his army anyway. In fact, speak of the flipping devil, everyone has basically just wandered straight out of that defensive pact immediately, spot on. Perfect. The defensive pact is now just completely disintegrated, which means now, if I were to actually... Never mind, that guy just created a new one, but that's that's probably fine. I'm not sure anyone's actually in it. Is this right now just a defensive pact? Yes, this is just a defensive pact of one. Now, I can understand why you're doing that. I am literally planning to invade you, so that is eminently reasonable. But you, my good man, have only actually got yourself... How many troops? Yeah, about 2,000 troops. Now, this guy has already got himself about 1,000 troops. I've got some troops over here. Yeah, at this point, with no one actually in the defensive pact, I'd say we probably just want to take this bit of land immediately. And meanwhile, Disaster has apparently got the flu. That is no good at all. I would like Disaster to survive, please. He kind of needs to get married to Duchess Maria of Normandy. Every son is flipping precious. All right, do not let this kid die. Also, my timing may be just a little bit off, because a bunch of people just jumped back into the defensive pact, which is interesting. Okay, maybe we'll just let this one go away. The moment the next one just wears off, jump straight flipping in, alright? We've got some good monthly decay going on here, so sooner or later... Hello? Who's just done something wrong? Duke Leofwine, what are you doing wrong exactly? Okay, whatever it is, you've decided to stop doing it, so that's fine. Meanwhile, the King of Bulgaria wants to marry young cats. Okay. Well, where exactly is the Kingdom of Bulgaria? It's somewhere in here, hang about. It's it's one of one of these. Um You look reasonably strong, to be honest. I wouldn't mind a non-aggression pact with you. I mean it's kind of irrelevant. And Hurt to... Uh, how good is Cat? And what has Cat actually got on her? Right now, Cat's not really got anything on Actually, Cat's good. Cat's actually... No, sorry. 
I'm keeping Cat, at least till she grows up. Cat's looking promising, which is unfortunate, because I'm pretty sure her brother's looking much worse, and he's the one who might inherit everything. Yes, obviously, her brother's Craven. Great. Just flipping spot on. Why couldn't you be more like your flipping twin sister? So you are proud and craven, which is, you know, terrible. Meanwhile, your twin sister is fussy, which isn't great, but she's shrewd, which is really good. That is not bad at all for a 14-year-old who's not got an education trait yet. So why is it always the people I want to be good that turn out terrible? And here we go, my new wife, Perrin. So years later, and after the first turbulent years, it seems everyone in the country has gotten used to Perrin Gladius Christi. Some appreciate her, some do not, but the more violent controversy and commotion has died out, people are now preoccupied with other matters. She lives on, though the tales of the early years of the Maid of Glamorgan are already the stuff of legend. Everything becomes normal over time. Alright, so I guess that's the end of her. Well, she's still around, and she's still my wife, and she's still leading our armies, because... Why the hell not? So yeah, I'm uh, I'm quite glad to be married to her. It's kind of cool. Meanwhile, the new king of Brittany wants his son, I assume. That's going to be your son, right? Yeah, your son to marry my daughter. I don't really see why not, and it will keep him on side. But again, not really important, so I'm going to leave that be. And also, my little private merchant republic is once again just... Heading out for a war because I guess they feel like securing more and more cities. <laughs> Why not, eh? This is, yeah, this is all very entertaining. Yep, there we go. There are just apparently trade zones dotted all around Normandy and Flanders and whatever. So uh, I imagine you guys are getting pretty rich pretty quickly. And you certainly seem to have a healthy number of troops to call upon. So well done for that. Oh, but things are getting worse for disaster. We thought it was just flu, but now that's become... Dysentery, and that is uh, that is dangerous. All right, keep sending for the doctor here. I think we've actually got a pretty good doctor, if I recall correctly. I think our doctor is uh, yes. Here we go, a renowned physician with learning of sixteen. That's that's pretty decent. That's fine. And obviously, we've got another incredibly competent-looking female child who happens to be low-born and of a bastard dynasty. So that's great. You know, my legitimate sons look awful. Random bastard girls look amazing, obviously. Also, I think, tragically, Oncom did just die. So that is a shame. Who is... Oh, actually... Well, Perrin, my wife, who would be a loyal vote. Okay, this is interesting. You over there, you're plus 44 even though you're not on the council. So, do you really need to be on the council? I don't think so. Perrin, at a 19. That is... That's healthy. That's very healthy. But then again, if she's leading my forces, does that mean she's not allowed to be getting on with Chancellor duties? Alright, just in case, I am going to actually, yeah, make you do that. And you're also going to go over to... Hang on, what do I want you to do? Yes, I want you to go over to here. I want you to sort out this Flanders situation, please. Head over there, and let's just make sure you're not, like, leading my actual retinue, which I think is just chilling out right here. Yes, that's fine. We'll have other people leading the retinue, not a problem. And I believe that's about the same level as Oncom. So, yeah, she's got a 20% chance of fabricating a claim annually. So, uh, if we're very lucky, I'll get something pertaining to Flanders, and we can just go and grab that. And very conveniently, I'm sitting on a giant old pile of military points. Okay, let's have a little look-see at the military right now. I'd like to know what's actually uh, in the damn thing. So my personal domain is, uh, yeah, 2,500 light troops, and then we've got about, yeah, 4,000 heavy infantry, then a lot of light and heavy cavalry. Though weirdly, yeah, only about 262 heavy cav there, but I'm pretty sure my retinue's got like, yeah, that's like another 950 heavy cav right there, so that is very, very useful. And horse archers! Which is kind of cool. We've just got some of them from the time when we were very briefly uh, Greek culturally. So go on then. Let's get the heavy infantry up to uh, level 5. Very, very nice indeed. And also, we do need more legalism. So let's get legalism up one more level. And that actually unlocks the next bunch of taxes. How's my council right now? How are you guys? That is, oh, you will just pass anything I want because I changed the succession laws to something you guys like more. 
Okay, good. Let's just pass some wacky laws. Oh yeah, they will just basically back anything I want, including more troops from nobles. So, uh, that... That I could do with. Yeah, there we go. Let's just get some more troops off my nobles. More troops coming out of the vassals. And they will actually vote against their own interests just because they're loyalists. Oh, that's spot on. Or, I could rob them of some of their powers. Okay, what do they actually have a vote on right now? So they've got... Execution is uh, them. I could take execution off them and basically just execute whoever I want. That's kind of fun. Or banishment. Honestly, I've not been doing much of that. I'd rather just have more troops. Yeah. Let's just have more troops. So these guys are going to all vote for that. Which is absolutely flipping marvellous. So yeah. Put that to the vote. And momentarily my vassals will generate even more flipping troops for me. Spot on. Oh, and I think Duchess Maud may have just... Yes, passed away. Died in an accident. But apparently not an actually suspicious one. So that's fine. Okay, who is the new uh, Duke of Wessex? Duke, it's another Duke Rice new. Right, it's, wait, hang on. That's not the same guy, is it? You've got Duchess of Wessex, Worcester. No, no, it's an unrelated Rice new. There's a lot of people called Rice new. Well, he really, really wants to be on the council. And honestly, he's actually interesting. Yeah, go on then. With diplomacy of 18... I'll just put you on the council as the chancellor. I mean, it's arguably safer than having my wife there. You're almost as good. So, uh, welcome to the council. Get on with fabricating the claims, please. You are, I think, yeah, almost entirely as good. A tiny bit worse, but barely any at all, which is fine. You don't mind that, do you, dear? No, she's fine. All right, she was a little bit annoyed she got fired from the council, but she's pretty okay with it. In fact, I am missing an advisor right now, so... Let's just double check no one really needs to be on the council. And it seems like everyone is... Yep, everyone seems pretty cool with it, to be honest. Everyone flipping loves me. So, as everyone flipping loves me, I guess I may as well just have the people who love me the most. And yeah, you know what? Perrin, the virgin warrior maiden of Glamorgan, or whatever, who's also my wife. Uh, you are more than welcome to... Oh, you're just allowed? Hang on, I could have sworn you're allowed. Oh, wait, I've heard about this. There's like a cooldown. After you fire someone from the council, you need to wait like two years or something to actually award them a new thing. It's why you want to use the change council position button rather than actually firing someone and rehiring them. Because it removes the I'm angry at being fired thing and also means you get rid of that small cooldown. Well, that's fine. I guess I just need to find someone who's like important for some reason. Duke of Essex. He sounds fairly important. Welcome to the council. You seem to love me just as much as everyone else does. Okay, that all works for me. And meanwhile, more trouble in Ireland. Unsurprisingly, yes, the very young baby queen is facing a revolt. So, actually, from another woman, in fact. So, Morder of the Irish Revolt. And this is... Oh, this is Gavelkind. A civil war for Gavelkind. Right, well, you've got 7,500 troops, which is actually quite significant. Oh, you've not got much at all. Right, you're going to be in a lot of trouble then. Got it. So, Ireland is totally about to go gavel kind. Which is interesting. So, I'm not sure who the actual heir would be until she has any children. And if she's about to go gavel kind... Ooh. I might just want to get her betrothed to one of mine. I mean, I know I already was, but... Who else have we... Wait, what? Why isn't... Matt, who are you supposed to be marrying? Because I swear you're already supposed to be, like, betrothed to what's her face of... Okay, why is that worn off? Maybe we cancelled that at the same time as we annoyed each other. Right, Maria, would you be interested in, like, getting back with this random guy? And no, he's sick and diddly diddly d. Okay, but Matt, no. Okay, would prefer matrilineal political concerns, base reluctance. That is a shame, because once upon a time, you two were betrothed. And I feel like, yeah, Matt, even though he's not very good, should at least be able to secure a very, very decent alliance. Well, there's no one who's, like, immediately more obvious to actually marry Matt at the minute, but she's one, he's 15. He'd waste a lot of years of his life waiting for her to come of age. I would rather 
potentially find someone else for her to marry still of my line. Yes, here we go. So, this kid down here, who is my grandson, this is the son of my eldest daughter, I believe. Even though he's sickly, she's actually willing to go for it. Yeah, that'll do. So, she says yes to that, even though it's not matrilineal and he's currently ill. Purely on grounds of, yeah, opinion of him, my liege, prestige effects, marvellous. So... Get that sorted out. So we do now have a betrothal set up between her and one of mine, which will be absolutely flipping lovely. The question then is, yeah, who on earth is Matt going to marry? You know what, let's just wait to see how good he is first. I think for the moment at least, Matt is still the, uh, hang on, no, over to inheritance. Oh yeah, everyone's got behind Matt. And also King Hubert of Africa has lost that war. Right, um... What does that actually mean? What was that war about? Because you don't seem to have lost much. Though then again, you are also kind of terrible. So I think we're actually just going to... Uh, range betrothal, break betrothal. What betrothal? Oh yes, Nellis. Yes, I think we're just going to be breaking that betrothal. Bye! So we're just going to break down that alliance. We'll find someone else for you to marry. Honestly, I don't feel like he was going... Oh bloody hell, the border gore in Western Europe is horrible. We need to fix this. Honestly, just let the Holy Roman Empire come back in. I don't care that they're terrifying. Anything's better than this. Oh, and here we go. Buying more slots in Devon. Now, people have been talking to me about this, saying, John, you should never turn down a slot. Buying a slot in order to have a new holding is really, really valuable. Except, here's the thing. So, if I actually build, say, a new castle in Devon or Cornwall, that's fine, but that does count towards my domain limit. Like right now, one of my domains is the Barony of Uslas. So that does actually fill up one of my slots. So I can't just have like everything being a barony that's a castle and I'll just like pump out infinite troops from my capital, as nice as that would be. So the only thing I can build there instead would be say, a city. Except cities cost a lot of flipping money and take a long time to make their money back. Here we go. So the city of Bodmin over in Cornwall, that has a base tax of 33, boosted to 63 because of all sorts of benefits. Cornwall is booming. Technology, ports, city walls and markets, everything, basically. Everything's good. So that is actually making, yeah, about 64 gold a turn and city of Axminster up to 67. Okay. If I build a new holding here, that is going to cost me about 655 gold to set up as a new anything. So it'll pay for itself in about 10 years. That's taking about two years to build. So in 12 years, we'll be in profits. But I've already got a spare slot in Devon. So you know what? Let's go for it. People have been saying it's a good idea. Let us add new slots to Devon. So that should now presumably create a, yeah, a brand new slot in Devon. And now I just need to save up enough money to start throwing down some extra cities. Because I've got, yeah, I've got the Barony of Uslas, I've got the city there, I've got the city of Bodmin, marvellous. So yeah, after a little bit of time just focusing on saving up the money to build new cities, if I just throw down two new cities in Devon, and then actually just keep my tax collector in Devon under all circumstances, Devon could make a stupid amount of money. That could be very, very interesting indeed. Okay, I see where the comments are going with that one. Sure, I see the maths here. Oh, and this is no good. I've had a long council meeting, had a few too many to drink, and unfortunately fall on my face. I can feel the taste of blood in my mouth and the dizziness sets in. I can not draw attention to myself, but I might get wounded, and I might even flipping just die. Or I can call for help, but... Well, a bit embarrassing. Let's try calling for help, and uh, oh dear. Right. Apparently, now I've got a favour to this guy who is called the Tormentor. I owe a favour to a man called the Tormentor of Wessex. Oh, great. Well, that's just going to end well. Still, I need to be a bit careful. I'm not sure if that's a sign that my health is not as good as I'd like it to be. Oh, and I'm finally ready to level up to level 3 over here as well, which is good. I can finally invite a holy man to my court. I'm not sure if they've done that before, so that'll be fun. Also, I can teach a virtue, which is charitable or kind. Actually, you know what? They're both pretty decent. 
So being able to, uh, yeah, pass on one of those two, not so bad. Meanwhile, Matt is... There we go, up to the next level. Matt is 15. Did we not get an intervention opportunity with Matt? Because I swear one never came up, even though I am his tutor and he is my son. And I believe my... Yes, I think the threat has officially just melted away. And no, 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 don't just sleep with random people. Not appropriate. I think the defensive pact is just gone. Yeah, the defensive pact is just... Completely disintegrated. Good. Good, 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 good. And that means, I imagine by now, your troops are slowly recovering. Good, good, good. I'd say, as the defensive pact is now gone, time to immediately prove that they probably should have had it in the first place. So, declare war, pushing this guy's claims, and, oh, hello. The Duchy of Tuscany might get involved. Right, but then so might the Kingdom of Aragon. So, Duchy of Tuscany... Uh, where is that? And who actually, like, runs the thing? This guy, he's got 3,300 troops. Alright, maybe that's a little bit more dangerous than I thought it was going to be. But it will take him time to mobilise. So, yeah, and he won't join in the war immediately. He'll take a moment to decide. So, I'd say we're pretty safe to just basically just, yeah, grab that one bit of land. Won't be a problem. So, just immediately uh, help this guy out. Council is 100% on board, with the exception of this guy, whose only objective is it's not actually a big enough challenge, so whatever. Yeah. Send that. We are at war. Deploy the retinue and raise some troops. We don't need many. Just a handful will do the job. Honestly, we probably just need the actual regulars from Cornwall. Yeah, there we go. The Cornwall lands alone are about 6,000. That should be plenty. Get me a couple of boats. That is more than enough boats. But you know what? It's only going to take a second. It's fine. Also, I've been sent a new finger bone for my collection. That's just lovely. Ah, slight annoyance here. I can't actually besiege this area because there's too many troops here. Right, I need to actually back out of this area in order to allow him to raise his troops so I can murder his troops on the open field. Then I can start actually sieging this place up because, yeah, right now I don't have quite enough troops to do it. And also keep an eye here. Are you not going to bother raising your army? Could you please raise your army to assist in this? Because I don't really want to do this by myself, if you'd be so kind. And, oh, Kat's finished her education. Obviously, she's got level four. I bet her flipping brother doesn't. So, Kat is now... Kat is really good. Kat is really, really good. But no one will vote for her because she's a woman. Despite the fact that 9, 15, 11, 6, and 6... At age 16, that is solid. I bet any amount of money her brother is garbage. Yes, it turned out less well than expected. Oh my goodness, appalling mediocrity, thy name is Matt. Oh no. Oh flipping no. I mean, it's not a total disaster. He picked up shrewd as well, but even then, that's... I mean, it would be a disaster. It's just boring instead. Thanks to the shrewd. Okay. So, none of this worked out well. Oh, no, this is interesting. We've got ourselves here a girl who has a strong inheritable claim on the Duchy of Moray. Which might well be very, very useful. Yeah, go on then. Let's just make sure we lock down the Scottish question. We'll get these two betrothed. And I have successfully groomed an heir. A terrible, terrible heir, but an heir nonetheless. Hooray for me, I suppose. And with that done, I can definitely move myself off family. Now, I did have one thing I was curious about. Like, I know I've previously been discussing the marriage of me and Perrin as a purely symbolic holy matter. But I am also curious whether in theory I'm allowed to seduce her if I'm sexy enough. So, is that actually... Allowed. Hang on, let's just let time pass by for a second here. Am I allowed to try and seduce my own wife? No, tragically, the answer appears not. Which is a shame, because I really would like to take my parents' relationship to the next level. Oh, and obviously the whole St. Benedict thing. So, yeah, uh, Cat has become kind, which is pretty decent. Matt has become humble, which is terrible. So Matt has once again let me down. 
Ah, meanwhile, exactly what you'd normally expect to happen in a war has indeed happened. This guy decides to come and attack my capital while I'm actually attacking the target. So we're just basically counter-sieging each other. That's fine. This here is why I leave a bunch of extra troops at home. We can just basically gather in Somerset and then just go and smash him. No problem at all. So there we go. Now we can start actually sieging down my target. Meanwhile, we can just win a battle versus the allies that have shown up for these guys over in Ireland. Yeah, once again, there's just sieging and counter-sieging going on, but the rebels so significantly outnumber Ireland, they are going to totally force Gavelkind on Ireland, which is lovely, and uh, something's going on up in Scotland as well. Oh, blimey! Someone, someone put out the eyes of the flipping Queen of Scotland. Who did that? Why? Though she does apparently have one glass eye, not actually in her eye socket, so not quite sure where she's... Keeping that, to be honest, and she's an adulteress. Oh dear. I hope there wasn't some form of, yes, unfortunate adultery-related eye-gouging accident. That'd be very unpleasant. And continuing the theme of highly disappointing sons, Young Prince Disaster does not have a single flipping trait yet. Fascinating. His one trait is dysentery. So, he makes a lot of mess, but other than that, not really sure, to be honest. Um... Okay, I mean, you look like you're sort of maybe going to be decent at stewardship, so conscientious wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, I suppose. Have fun. Right, I've recalled Perrin back to Cornwall just to lead this small force here. We'll smash these guys, chase them down a bit. I think East Anglia is once again just going on campaign because East Anglia flipping loves going on campaign. This time they decided to attack the... No, don't attack Normandy. We like Normandy. But I guess they want to, yeah, secure a bunch of flipping cities because they just do. Also, there seems to be something bad going on actually inside. Oh, hello. Um, why exactly are you at war right now? Who are you at war with? Who's attacked you? Um, okay. So, yeah, attackers, me. Defenders, this guy. So, who's this exactly? Why is the Burgundian army coming after you? Because they... Shouldn't be, right? No, this has nothing to do with you. This is just an army of Burgundy taking on a different army of Burgundy. I don't know. I think this doesn't involve me. I think it's just a battle that's happening inside my territory. Meanwhile, Perrin is doing what she does best and basically just murdering the hell out of everyone. And, oh, Bjorn. No, Bjorn has been killed, which is very sad, but not Perrin. Perrin has not died because Perrin is just flipping God tier. Right, okay, so that's fine. Don't actually break down the army just yet. We might need to kill those guys a second time. Up to 45% here. And so far, yeah, we're just... Yeah, who exactly... Who are you guys? What's going on here? Burgundy? Why is this happening in my territory? So this is Burgundy attacking Duke Louis the Dragon in the Burgundian Champagnian de Jure War over okay fine doesn't involve me in the slightest except the sultan of burgundy is involved because of course he is and there we go the siege of shallon is in my favor we have now started capturing the actual target of the war lovely now the question is yeah just follow this guy and just basically kill him a few more times please perrin and uh, feel free to take some more commanders with you we've got plenty more it's fine here we go. The reinforcements have fled to Scotland. I think they're trying to send boats right now to actually try and, uh, yeah, rescue them. This is an evacuation, but we are going to get there long before the actual evacuation boats make it. Yeah, there we are. We've caught them. We've caught them out of position. Now we can kill them again. That moves us up to, yeah, we're up to 69. This battle's not even actually done yet. And... Hello, do we have another flipping adventure after us? We might do, you know. A claim it to my title. Who's this guy exactly? I don't actually know who he is. Where are you located? Right, he's located in one of these territories over here. I guess. Right, and you do indeed have weak claims on England, weak claims on Kent. Oh, you've got weak claims on bloody everything. Okay. Where are you from, my good man? You are the son of Ulthre... Beorth not so oh no wonder he's so angry and attacking me. He's probably just furious about his ridiculous name. Okay, and El oh not even gonna attempt that one. Okay, fine. Um So he's only actually got an intrigue of four. 
How about we just quickly get rid of him? That'd be marvellous. Yeah, plot power is already 58%. And uh, who has got the most plot power here? Oh my goodness. Would you believe there's a bunch of people floating around in his territory that just do not like him very much. So I'm very happy to just send some money over to... Oh, I've already got the spy master on board. Nice. This should be all we need, to be honest. And these guys are only 15 to go, so this is spot on. There we go. Plot power of 233%. I'm not sure this guy is going to get to launch his stupid campaign, actually. I think we're going to be fine. Except, wait, hang on, there's... Wait, hang the flip on. There's... Oh! That's why. Because one of the actual holdings inside Dijon doesn't belong to us. Right, there's just a random small barony that actually belongs to the Duchy of Champagne, which we will totally go and take... Very, very soon, it's fine. And apparently my favourite subjects do not actually interest me anymore. I am no longer zealous. Apparently I think I was getting a bit on the boring side with all of the beheading of heretics. Don't tell Perrin though, I think she might be just a little bit on the religious side. That's a shame though, that's actually uh, minus two Marshall. Marshall is nice to have, that's certainly true. And there we go, we're up to 100% in this war, so yep, yeah, enforce my demands, and I would like this guy to just have this bit of territory. So that has just slightly expanded my French holdings right there. So yeah, it's just one little bit of extra land, and I think we actually don't have... Yeah, it looks like because there was only one tiny bit of land, threat has not jumped up, there's going to be no defensive pact against me, perfect. And the only ambition I can have is for peace for five years. Good luck with that. Definitely, yeah, that's going to be, um, that's going to be an interesting one. I should really keep a closer eye on succession, by the way. I'm 60 years old and I have had, uh, yeah, a bit of an, uh, awkward fall when I was drunk. So, I'm getting older. I'm definitely getting older. And by the way, I'm just loving all of this trade zone business. This is looking very, very good indeed. This guy just going to war to just get all these cities set up. Just, yeah, individual cities are all over the flipping shop. This is marvellous. Uh-oh. Um. Speak of the devil. Right. Um. Emperor Happiness just straight up died. I have not looked at the, um, the succession rules in quite a while, actually. Are we fine? Are we doing okay? I hope we're doing okay. Oh, this is... This is actually earlier than I was expecting. Like, I thought I had a good 5-10 years more at this point. Right. So. Let's just take a moment to remember Emperor Happiness. A man who had an interesting life. Raised, of course, in the Greek tradition. He believed in Orthodox Christianity. A belief that he held incredibly firmly, right up to the moment where it was convenient for him to become Catholic instead. But he did hold on to his Greek roots and in fact introduced horse archers into the Cornish military. He truly believed in his Greek culture, right up to the point where it became politically convenient for him to actually swap it out for Breton culture. At which point he did. But... Emperor Happiness also faced one of the worst crises that we've actually faced in the entirety of this run, which is the Crisis of Gavelkind, and he sorted that out. Mostly. Mostly, anyway. It, it's mostly all fine. But other than that, his reign was perhaps a little bit underwhelming. He was setting up big things. He had plans to rebuild France as the new territory. He had plans to take over Scotland but none of it came to pass, and indeed, he's actually managed to lose a, a fair bit of territory. Meaning that the new emperor, Emperor Morhytho, he actually is, yes, weirdly um, in a weak position. Weaker than any previous emperor, weaker than any king. In fact, probably the weakest, most vulnerable position we've ever flipping seen in this game. Because England has been lost to King Matt. So, Matt has just naffed off to England. I really hope he's actually planning to, yeah, follow through on marrying that girl from Scotland, because that would be very flipping useful if he did. We've lost the Kingdom of Jerusalem, but you know what? Good. It was kind of annoying and in the way, and we didn't really do anything with it, so that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Oh, Emperor Happiness. Your reign was not really a happy one, to be honest. 
rest in peace. You've deserved it. You had a good long reign there, I think. And yes, indeed, I suppose we now just welcome Emperor Morhai, though, which is <laughs> great name. I like that. It's like, Morhai, though, it's good. It sounds chirpy. So, um, what's the current state of play here? Because, yeah, there's Cornwall. And England has actually fallen out of our direct control. Because England is now, yeah, under the control of King Matt, who has... Okay, not that many troops. England is not in that good a position. So we've got, yeah, England right there with 5,000 troops. Ireland's in the middle of a bit of a civil war just to impose gavel kind. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. I assume you, Mohai though, yeah, I'm assuming that what happened is you have this territory. Yes, you have this territory right here. So we need to get rid of all of that because right now you're going to have too many duchies, I'm going to assume. So yeah, you've got the Duchy of Munster... Cornwall, Gwyneth, and then... Yes, that's it, actually. So we just need to get rid of the Duchy of Munster. So who fancies being the new Duke of... The Duke of... Duke of Brittany? The Duke of Brittany also has... Right, so everything's a bit of a mess for the time being. So Count Clemens the Whisperer reports directly into me for some reason. Who's the actual... There, then we've got... This guy right here, who is the the Duke of Brittany, who's the King of Brittany? Because I would have thought you guys ought to be, like, reporting in for that. What do I actually own? I actually own the Empire of Cornwall, the Kingdom of Wales. That's it. Where's, where's the King of Brittany? Because there should be a King of Brittany. Hang on. Ah, that's where the King of Brittany is. He's naffed off over here. So this is the King of Brittany... And also the King of Jerusalem. Right, so he's naffed off over in this direction. But his actual vassals are... Yeah, exclusively the vassals around here. So, for some reason... I imagine he's not going to be thrilled with me because he wants direct control of... Yeah, that's fine. Honestly, you can have it. Um, so... I'm just going to, yeah, actually transfer that vassalage to you. There we go. So now the Duke of Brittany reports into the King of Brittany. That makes a lot more sense and that means he's actually okay with me all things considered. Now I've also got these guys right here. Now by any chance the Duke of Brittany, you're probably not going to be keen on me because you probably want control of those two counties which to be honest you should have. So these two people, you go straight to me you go straight to me. Fine. I'm just going to transfer both of them over. Because there's no need for me to control them directly. They ought to belong to that duke. That is perfectly fair. So let's just transfer some vassalage over there. Ah, except I can't transfer this. Because this guy's technically a duke. Because he's also the duke of de Herbeth. Okay. That's awkward. But I imagine you guys don't mind me so much. And why don't you like me, by the way? Uh, ambitious, both ambitious, title claimant. Okay, not, it's not so bad. There's no massive barrier to this. Yeah, you would still like the... You'd like the Duchy of Munster. Well, I don't think you can have the Duchy of Munster, to be honest. I think that ought to belong to, to somebody else. Because right now you have way too much land, actually. I'm a bit... Well, not exactly worried by you, but... Yeah, I just need to give this land away to, like, some very friendly Irish person. I just need to find a friendly Irish person, give both of these away to him, also give him the Duchy of Munster, and then that will actually just, yeah, offset the power of Brittany. I'm not having Brittany having any more power than that. Already, yeah, with the Duke of Brittany and the King of Brittany and all of that business, yeah. There's there's too much power. Oh, bloody hell, is that actually now the... Right, that is now officially the territory of Brittany. There is now just Brittany down in the Middle East, because of course they're flipping is. Also, at some point, for reasons I'm not quite sure about, Brian, the bastard son of Catastrophe the Just, who is now apparently, yeah, just functioning as a steward over in Brittany, he became Egyptian. I'm not quite sure why, but he did. I should tell you what, Teudric, who was once potentially in line to be the Emperor. Let's just actually get him over here. I'm just going to get him over to my court. He can actually be the new Duke of Munster and all of that business. That's absolutely flipping fine. So we've also managed to lose a finger of St. John. We managed to get all of the rest of this. There we go. Lovely. So, uh, you, you can have like 
all of this at this point. Here we go. County of Desmond. That is now yours. So is the county of... Actually, do I need to give you the county of Ormond? No, I don't. In fact, I do actually have a son who's not landed. Prince Odia. So... Alright, Prince Odia, you are... You're terrible. Fine, Prince Odia, just naff off to Ireland. Don't bother me again, please. So, County of Ormond, there you go. You've got that. And this guy, as he's actually, you know, not terrible, he can actually have the uh, the Duchy of Munster. So, we can have... Oh, I thought that included that. Okay, maybe it doesn't. That's fine. So, he gets that. No problem at all. So, that should mean everyone is now... Pretty cool with me, all things considered. So I need to just make sure I'm actually wearing all the right gear. Because sometimes, yeah, for some reason, the game just decides to, uh, yeah, put weird stuff that doesn't make a huge amount of sense onto your character. So over to the treasury. Make sure I've actually got the right stuff on. Yeah, I'm not using the noble scepter. I'm using the quality scepter. I am, um, yep, using the golden sword. Silver hilted long sword. Actually, I'm an emperor now. I should probably start breaking some of this stuff down. And actually, like, getting better quality stuff. Because now I'm an emperor, I think I can actually get stuff that's, like, quality 3 and 4 rather than just 2. So I should probably look to change that at some point or other. Right. Now, the advantage of Emperor Morhai, though, which is Marshal of 20 flipping 5. Okay. Not bad. He's apparently ugly as sin. Oh, hang on. He's not ugly enough. Right, well, we need to do that. Hang on, I need to find literally the ugliest series of haircuts I can find. There we go. Logically, if you were horrendously ugly, you'd just have as much hair as possible to try and basically hide your face. So that will do marvellously. We'll just have a ridiculously large amount of hair on him. That's spot on. He's also a trickster and a flanker. So yeah, he is a, a competent military leader. This guy's actually... He's okay. He's 42. Yeah, brawny, ugly, brave, diligent, lustful, patient, ambitious. Oh, it's a shame we didn't get to you earlier, my good man. Also, what are you trying to do right now? You're trying to fabricate a... No, maybe don't try to fabricate a claim on, like, this bit of Ireland. Okay, you're fine. You're the emperor now. It's okay. How many troops do you actually... Oh, bloody hell. Wow, okay. 28,000 troops, but... Yeah. Only about 13,000 of mine. At this point, if all my vassals actually joined in together, they could take down Cornwall and Wales, which would be concerning. And, oh, unfortunately, it looks like I've only just actually changed my focus to seduction. So I'm stuck in seduction for a little while, unfortunately. Yeah, for another five years or thereabouts. And my wife is... Actually, my wife is 29. So it is possible, just possible... I might be able to still actually have a handful of children with her, which is nice. And the council is completely empty. Fine. Uh, how many people have we got in the court? Uh, 48 in the court. That's not too ridiculous. What have we got in terms of packs? Right now, nothing. Pretty much. We've basically got nothing. So all of our old alliances have been tossed out, obviously. Uh, that bit of land, by the way, obviously matches this bit of land over here. Though actually, I don't have any... Um, yeah, I've actually not got any reason not to... Ooh. Well, this is interesting. I assume I'm allowed to declare war on... Why? Why am I not allowed to declare war on you? Declaring war on someone defending against heathens costs an additional... Ah. Okay. Can't declare war if we've got any army levies. Do I have any levies raised? Where are my levies? Oh, hang on. I forgot to... I forgot to break down the levies. Sorry, that's... That's embarrassing. My mistake... Okay, now am I allowed to attack you? Still no, because I need to actually be able to afford the piety, because this guy's currently in a war with heathens. But yeah, this guy, this Duke of Burgundy, we need to potentially uh, just keep piling the power onto him. Because he, oh he's a good man, scholarship focus, well done sir. We need to actually make sure we push these claims on Champagne and Poitou. So we need to make sure that happens. And in addition, oh yeah. Right, so what's going on right now? Right now is... Okay. This guy who is currently the King of Brittany and the King of Jerusalem has got, like, all the votes for being the next Emperor. Okay, and that is mainly just votes from him... Yeah, just him and his. Okay, this is... This is fine. This is absolutely fine. The problem is, right now, there's not enough votes. We need to get more votes. And in order for there to be more votes, there's going to have to be a... 
a very significant uh, reimagining of what our empire ought to look like. But I've got a plan, a plan that has been mildly interrupted by happiness dying there, but it's fine. It's all fine. Let's just make 100% sure that, yeah, this guy is, no, 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 over to inheritance. Let's just make sure, okay, he's being voted for there as well. So, you potentially are looking like a very good candidate with your magnificently wide beard to be the next leader, but, okay. For the moment at least, we've got the ugly bastard Morhai though, Morhai though the ugly. He's not actually part of any known society, though, again, the assassins are showing up. I mean, he is a military man. You know what? I mean, I could just join the assassins. I don't know quite, you know, how I'm going to manage that, but I'm going to give it a go. Sure, let's join the assassins. He's an ugly bastard who likes whacking things with a big old stick. Why not? Okay, next big priority. How do my vassals feel about me? So, plenty of them flipping love me, which is interesting because... Okay, yeah, that's just the people who I've just given some stuff to. Let's just arrange these guys by rank. So, King of Brittany is... Uh, he's fine with me. He's fine with me. Queen of Ireland, absolutely fine with me. King of England, not so much. Title claimant wants seat on council. This all looks pretty positive, to be honest. I've got rid of all the spare duchies. So what I need to do really is, yeah, just make sure that some of these people get on the council. Okay. Slight concern. Um, some of these people are terrible. So let's just actually arrange this by, yeah, important. So who are the really important people that must be on the council? They are the King of Brittany who is at least a vaguely competent marshal, and the King of England, who is kind of terrible at everything. That's unfortunate, because normally my go-to position for dumping someone who's not very good is marshal, but that's the only thing this guy's good at. So, I guess I may as well have you as marshal. And I guess this hurts me, but I guess we're going to have a only half-competent flipping steward. And by the way, have fun just gathering tax in Devon because that's what your life is now. It's basically just wandering around Devon trying to get peasants to pay their taxes. I hope you enjoy the glamorous life of being the King of England. Now, who else thinks they actually deserve to be on the council? And no one actually. Everyone else seems fine. All right, in which case, who's actually good at their job? And also, hang on, where's, where's Perrin? Perrin better not be gone. Like, Perrin should still be here, right? I mean, Perrin should have a, a minor role as... Yes, there we go. So Perrin is still around and apparently is potentially up for being remarried, which is completely pointless. So let's just actually just have her... Yeah, we'll just keep her in her existing role. But it's nice to know that Perrin the Bold is still around. Oh, she's a good egg is Perrin the Bold. Now, the most competent spy master would be Eugenia, the Princess of Cornwall, but unfortunately, she seems to sort of hate me because I'm ugly and she's envious. So, slightly petty reasons, to be honest, slightly petty reasons. I think we need to invite someone in from the outside to handle spy mastering, someone who's not important and never has anything to gain from betraying me. Decent quality Mayor of Swansea right there. We've got some good people right here who seem totally on board. Okay, let's just go and find ourselves a new spy master. Everyone in the world, someone who will join my court. Uh, any dynasty doesn't matter. And okay, couple of people who are 21 intrigue. That'll do. I did like someone nice and young, to be honest, uh, just so they can keep doing the job for quite some time. How about you? You're 57. You're only 16. That's kind of cool. Okay, someone from... Ooh, yeah, someone actually from the Byzantines. Welcome aboard. She's not showing up yet. And also, okay, King Matt has wasted no time doing... What is he doing? You better not be attacking Burgundy. Have you just kicked off a flipping Burgundian civil war? Do not do that. We like the guys in Burgundy. They're very important for the expansion of the empire. Oh, bloody hell. That's totally what he's just done. Yes. Yes, he has. He's just declared a de jure war to reclaim this. But that's fine. Don't worry. We still love you. I will give you more territory. Better territory, in fact. Also, Elfwyn has apparently not responded to the love letter. I left on her pillow because 
apparently I'm also having an affair with the Queen Mother of Ireland. Um, I think it's time to, to give up, actually. How many other flipping skeletons do I have in my closet? Hang on, I've got one rival, the Bishop of Coventry, and... Okay, that's it. No lovers, no friends. That's a bit sad in some ways, but we will sort it out. It's going to be fine. Also, my own wife is seeking to kill the Prince of Brittany, so please don't. Just let's have no drama for a second. We're still just settling in, okay? It's like still my first day. Let's not all murder each other and start a civil war. Though apparently we've actually got a random genius in the family, which is nice, albeit unfortunately... Yeah, she's not exactly got a good combination of traits for anything, and she's a girl, so... Bit of a shame, bit of a waste of, yeah, the genius trait there, real shame actually. Though that does make me think, part of the problem is, right now, we're really struggling to stabilise. We keep having just, you know, a line of reasonable but not spectacular leaders showing up. I need to actually train a new generation, a competent, strong generation. And to do that, I think the best way might be to just basically, yeah, let's just actually try and find some geniuses, get them to court, and then use my seduction focus to just turn them into lovers. So we will just basically breed a new generation of geniuses, and it will all be lovely. Looks like someone else over in Russia had the same idea, but uh, may have taken it a bit too far. This person is simultaneously inbred and genius, so uh, that's not great, but... We do have over here, yeah, this will do the job, 33 years old, she will come to my court, Swedish genius, wants to get married officially, can't manage that, but we can get you the next best thing, it'll be fine. Right, over you come anyway, and there we go, she has arrived, marvellous, so uh, yes, her husband died of cancer, which is sad, so let's just actually get on with seducing her, marvellous. Make sure, by the way, I don't actually go with the army anywhere, just in case. Matt is just getting on with taking Bedford back for England, which I suppose is fair enough, really, sure. And yes, now the chase begins. How good am I at seducing people, by the way? Not very. Apparently, I've not done it very much. This might be my first time seducing anybody because I don't actually have any of the traits. Not even, like, the basic amateur seduction one, so... I'm sure this is all going to be fine. Okay, so I've started off by just sending her a big old pile of stuff and filled her room with wildflowers. Not had anything back yet. Keep going. That's fine. That's a decent starting point. You know, maybe you came on a little bit too strong there, more high though. Just, you know, immediately just literally filling her room with wildflowers. That might have been a bit over the top. Just a bit. And someone wants to kill... No, don't kill Brian. What's Brian ever done wrong? Leave Brian alone. Meanwhile, blimey. Okay, the Basileus of the Byzantine Empire, and also the heir to some random barony, but I'm not sure why I even bothered mentioning that one. He must be very proud of the place. He was actually interested in marrying cats. Okay, decline that for now. Let's just have a little look-see at this. Let's just, yeah, see who you might be interested in marrying. Because we've got, you know, a few people floating around. Yeah, so he's totally into cats. The question is, are we willing to let Cat go? Because Cat is actually pretty good, all things considered. Like, I might be better off just... Actually, not funny, she hasn't got any genetic traits. So, yeah, you know what? Actually, hang on, this doesn't actually get me a... No, this doesn't get me a non-aggression pact, unfortunately. Okay, what about a betrothal? Who could we betroth? So, we've got a bunch of kids coming through. These are... I assume these are my children. Hang on, how many children do I have? I've got... Yeah, Princess Analdric, and then two sons, including, yeah, Prince Odir, who's already flipping disappointing. But we've got one good thing right here. Yeah, actually, we've got a half-sister here, and we've got you as a niece. Now, he would apparently say yes to that, but no, obviously, he's not willing for a matrilineal marriage. <laughs> okay, I can understand that, but you... Okay, my half-sister, who's not particularly good, how would you like to get betrothed to her? Because that's a flipping non-aggression pact. Okay, that's... that's of interest. Right, flipping here. Non-aggression pact with the Byzantines. I wonder if they'd be interested for going full-on alliance. That could be... 
That could be very, very interesting indeed. So yeah, he accepts that. And no, tragically, no alliance with those guys. And oh, blimey, Italian revolt is a little bit on the large side. Is that girl still queen, by the way? And uh, if she is, for how much longer? That is, oh yeah, that's someone's claim on Italy. Yeah, I think she might not necessarily be around for too much longer. Let's not bother with Italy for the time being. Yes, we're in a bit of an awkward position right now, actually. We've got this lovely big old empire, but three not particularly interesting children. All of them looking... Well, you might be alright, actually. It's kind of a shame you're on a heritage focus. Oh, that's because you're not actually being educated yet. Okay. Fussy and conscientious. Could be worse. And you... Gregarious and fussy. I'm currently in the middle of a diplomacy education. Could be alright again. Yeah, not bad at all. And right now we've actually only got, uh, yeah, two elections to watch. Both of them right now going to this guy, which is welcome. But yeah, he's dominating the flipping votes just because, uh, yeah, Brittany, De Herbeth, Leinster, all voting for him. Right, so this guy's definitely next up, except he's, he's 35. So uh, with me being, what is it? Yeah, 43. There's no guarantee that I'm going to die before him. Also, it would appear that the people who live in Western Europe are no more keen on the border gore than I am, because a lot of people are suddenly on the march and just whacking each other. It feels like, uh, yeah, the removal of the Holy Roman Empire has led to... Something just changed colour down there as well. Yeah, the removal of the Holy Roman Empire has meant it's a bit of a free-for-all right now. It's uh, quite a massive free-for-all, in fact, down over here. So, uh, there is slowly... A bit of power being actually... Oh. What? Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. The the Mongols. And this this is history. Yes, we've received news of an epidemic in the Mongol revolt. Information is vague. Word is people are dying like flies. Fear of the disease is spreading as fast as the affliction itself. Furthermore, the condition is reported irreversible as well as incurable. And scattered records of events are worrisome. Oh, dear. Um... So, Plague only gets the weak. No, I'm pretty sure Plague gets, um, gets everyone, actually. Um, so this here, yeah, that's, that's the Black Death, then. The Black Death is currently, um, on the way. That's, that's interesting. That's very interesting. I mean, presumably it, it's, you know, probably just going to burn itself out over there. I don't see any realistic chance that's going to make its way over to Europe and kill basically everybody. That wouldn't happen, right? That, that definitely isn't going to happen. So, you know what, ladies and gentlemen? On that slightly, just slightly worrisome note, how about we uh, leave things off there? Because... Yes, indeed. The Mongols are coming, albeit a little bit more slowly than I thought they might. They've still not quite actually managed to border the Byzantine, so maybe they've reached the natural limits, but uh, there's a new problem, which is, yeah, so that Black Death thing, that is, that's definitely spreading. That's, that's spreading pretty quickly, actually. That just in its first month has just jumped quite a bit of distance there. So... We need to, uh, to keep an eye on that. Oh no, my goodness, Matt created the Duchy of Essex. Well, good news. I'm glad we're focusing on the important things right now. Um, could we maybe, like, yeah, we should probably just, yeah, get more hospital in. How is the hospital? We've got a good hospital here, right? It doesn't look that good now I look at it, to be honest. Like, we've got some separated wards, a leper colony, a soup kitchen. We've got a laboratory. That's nice. I mean, yeah, and I feel like, to be honest, an observatory wouldn't really help with the Black Death. So, I guess between shutting the gates and a fairly advanced hospital, we do at least have, yeah, some defense. We've got some defense against the Black Death. So, this will all be absolutely flipping fine. And no, 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 no. We're definitely not owing anyone favors. Go away. That's definitely going to be some defense. That's just grown again, hasn't it? Yeah, I feel like the Black Death is, is going to be a problem. So we'll hold things off here, ladies and gentlemen. We will have a look-see at how fast the Black Death spreads next time. I suspect the answer is very, very fast indeed. And I suspect once it's done, any plans we had for succession are kind of completely irrelevant at this point, actually. 
it feels like, uh, yeah, we'll just have to pick whoever bloody survives, because uh, everybody's flipping fair game. So we'll just see how that goes next time, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Crusader Kings 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. No, sadly, I cannot be the Santa Claus of murder tonight. So apparently, even though this thing is... Oh, no, no, you can't. No, you most certainly can't. Okay. Is that the symbol meaning I'm about to pull her over? Yep, there we are. There we... Oh! I feel like she didn't necessarily survive that. No, she's very dead.